Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you something super cool. It's amazing and I never knew I didn't know it until I didn't know that I didn't know it. All right, guys, I wanna show you how to do this amazing, um, simple distress background. I'm gonna show you the basics of base coating. And I wanted to show one thing that we skip over a lot of times. When I was painting this sample, um, this is fresh paint, it makes the board bow just a little bit and it gives it a little bit of bounce. Once it's completely dry and cured, that'll flatten out. But this is a, a project that will be stored. So I wanna show you how to treat your board so you don't have any of that going on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a product called Multi-Purpose Sealer um, and you're gonna seal around the entire board and that's going to make the board completely stable. Also, our boards are laser cut and they have a little bit of this dark line on it. Like it's a burn mark from the lasers when it cuts it. Now it's super precise, but it does leave, you can get a little bit of brown off on your projects. If you're gonna store this project, the possibility of it rubbing against something else is a good possibility. So it's a good idea just to seal the whole thing under. So we'll take the multi-purpose sealer. This is a really excellent product for all of your surface sealing. Not like sealing, but sealing. Gonna pick it up with our polyfoam brush and we're just going to base all the way around. So we're gonna base the edges and base everything. Watch for drips and that kind of thing. We're just gonna get it completely based and then let it dry completely. Okay, and I'll just rub the edges with that. And then I won't be able to pick up any of that burned edge stuff on anything that it's next to. When you're storing your projects, you can store them under the bed in a closet. Um, you wanna be careful not to you know, lean them like this kind of thing because after a while, the weight of the board can make it warp just a little bit. That doesn't always happen. It happens more with things that are not a pressed product, um, but it's still something that you wanna watch for. So flat or standing straight is the best way. And you can stack them in a pile if you want to, if you have a bunch of seasonal stuff in the bottom of a bin. <clears throat> so we'll get that all based. And then do the other side as well. And set it off to dry. Your brush always goes in water so that it doesn't dry. Um, paint and varnish oxidize with the air so you don't want that to happen. Okay, so now that I have my board, um, pretend that I've done this step on this board. Now that I have that, and that's actually had some time to dry and it's not very flexy at all. Um, I'm going to um, do the same thing, but I'm gonna base. So that was basing with the clear product. Now I'm gonna base with um, this off white. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shake. And if you burp your bottle, um, when you shake your bottle, when you open the lid, sometimes you get like a little spit thing that happens and it'll come onto your clothes or it'll go off on something around you. If you pop it on the table just one time, then it burps it and then when you open it, you'll never get any spitting. So that's just like a free little, oh my goodness tip. Okay, so you will, I'm gonna take this away and come back to here. I'm gonna flip this over. I've got brown on that side. So to make our cool background, we are gonna, I'm gonna show you the base coating just so that you get that whole technique. I want you to be able to um, see the techniques all the way from start to finish so that you know what you're doing. And I started just dripping here. Um, this black mat is one of our affiliate links and it is a silicon mat and it is so great for protecting your surface. All right, the best tip that I can give you for base coating is that you're gonna use thin coats because they'll dry faster. So you don't wanna use like a wad of paint um, and just spread it as far as you can get it. And then I shoot off the end of my board instead of cupping onto the end up here. This will make a big ridgy ridge up here. This I flip off and not that kind of flip off, but um, so you flip right off the edge of your board and then that makes the edges of your board really nice and clean. So when I do this, I'm gonna do two coats, and then when I get to that side, I'm going to turn it over. Flip, tip of my brush, flippy, 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 and smooth it all out. 
Then I'll set that aside to dry and then I'll do a second coat and let that dry and then I'll be at this point and I'll show you what happens next. All right, so our board is painted. We've got two coats on it. Now I'm gonna show you the distressing part. It is really fun to get this really just kind of um, universal distressing in the background. So what I chose to do on this one is I, I knew that my bunnies and my lettering would be a little bit brighter. And if I run a bunch of antiquing or distressing through them, I thought it was gonna make them too rustic and I really wanted that pop of spring and that really bright, bright funness. So I didn't want them distressed. So what we're gonna do is only distress our background. Okay, so I'll move that. And we're actually gonna start on this side. So I've got a six secret sandpaper on a sanding block. Um, these are one of our affiliate links. Um, both of them actually are. And we just, this is something that we don't, we just don't mess with. On studior12.com, we carry a lot of your artist products, but we don't necessarily carry all of the woodworky products like that. Um, other people just do it better than us. So it's better to do it the other way. Okay, so we're gonna take our board and I'm going to dig down on the heel side of my hand. And notice I'm gonna get a little bit heavier of a ridge. And then I wipe off as I go. I'm gonna make a big mess out of my um, silicon mat. And then I wanna keep my lines straight. When I had done this sample board, um, I got in the middle of the board and I just kind of randomly went around. If your lines don't stay straight, then the line distracts your eye. So you wanna make sure that you stay straight. Um, it's a really hard thing to do if you get just involved. You got some music going and you're like, you know, chilling and doing some stuff. Try to stay focused, okay? Um, it will be a much better effect if you stay focused and keep your lines straight. Okay, so just pull it in. And then I'll go in and use just the tippy edge of my sander where I want it and pull in so I don't end up with like a unibrow kind of look on there. If, and then in this case, I went on the heel and I pushed my heel down just a little bit, the heel of my hand. Okay. And you can be as aggressive as you want with this and that natural stain or the natural color of the wood is gonna be the perfect color. Um, you can do more than you think you're gonna to want to. And then if you don't like it, you can go back over with a little bit of the base coat paint and hide it, which is what I did with my wavy lines. I just went back over and just masked the things that weren't quite straight. Now we'll go along our edges. This is very satisfying to do this project like this. Okay, so we'll... They say that sanding is my cardio when we're painting, and I think that that's really true. It's so much fun. All right, now that I have that, I'm gonna go through the middle minding keeping it straight, okay? Because that's what I did wrong over here. But if I mess it up, I'll show you how to fix it. And I'm also going to use very light pressure. Just want a little bit of worn out, kind of almost like a worn piece of fabric, something super like comforting. Okay, now I'm assessing. No uni brows, happy to report. Okay, just like all of my edges to have a little bit of that sand. I'm gonna just wipe that all off. And to clean up this mess that is on my board, I'm gonna use some Zep. Um, that is a pretty magic thing. Um, this is silicone and so it sticks just a little bit. It doesn't stick like um, stay stuck stick, it just, the pieces of glitter and the pieces of sanding and the pieces of all that stuff just stick onto the mat. So the spraying a little bit of liquid helps get that stuff off. 
and it takes my paint off too. If you're in your kitchen and you're wiping this all off, maybe a baggie or um, a trash can right at the edge where you're wiping it off. I'm on a concrete floor, so we'll just wipe that off that way. We're gonna come on here. Now, the, what we have going on here, I wanna show you that our stencils are reusable. So I have used this already to paint this sign. Um, when you reuse your stencils, you don't need to do anything about it. Um, if you wanna see how to clean your stencils after you've used them like five or six times, we'll put a link up here and you will see a video on how to clean your stencils, including the ones you've glittered. Um, this is really important because boy, you get glitter on there and it's, you gotta clean that off. Okay, so this stencil comes with these two bands at the top and the bottom. And while it's well-designed and I do like it, I didn't love it. It's way too, I don't know, polka dotty weirdy. Um, I, I didn't like it. So I decided I wanted to go with the trends that we saw at market and just go with tea towel stripes. We have a wonderful tea towel stripe stencil that has like a wide band, which is the one that I used, and then a bunch of bands and three bands and then five or six or eight bands, whatever that is too, and blah, blah, blah. So there's a whole bunch that come on one stencil. This is our medium size. We carry them in a bunch of sizes. This is our smallest size. So you can do things like cards and um, ornaments and all of that kind of stuff. So we've got them for every purpose that you would wanna do. And that makes it really affordable to put it all on one stencil. Okay, so what we're gonna do to get started with this is I wanted to get rid of this and let's talk about design for a second. So what I did is I moved the bunnies up to the top of the board, getting rid of that band of stuff with its word right in its place that it was. And then I left a big space down here so that I could put the big wide stripe. Okay, so by doing that, what I did was I weighted the bottom of the stencil with the heaviest thing. Okay, so that's a neat trick that you can do when you're trying to introduce different elements. You do something a little bit wider than everything else. You do something with a little bit stronger line and that's gonna give you a weight right there and that will help the design way down to the bottom. If you put weight at the top, it'll seem like you're gonna flip over or something. So be careful of that. Um, so we wanted the weight at the bottom and so that's what I did and I'll show you how I did it. So we're going to go and move our bunnies way up to the top and thankfully, my board is as wide as my stencil. So that gives me a straight edge right there. And then I can anchor my stencil right at the top of my board. And that also gives me a nice straight line. So then I'll take our green tape. It's our stretchy tape. This is on our website, studior12.com. And while we're talking about studior12.com, make sure that you go there and sign up for our newsletter because that's how you're gonna get all the coupons for discounts and that kind of stuff. So um, you definitely wanna be a member of our newsletter list. And then also that's where we're gonna have like all of our products. I think we have 6,000 titles of stencils in all the sizes. Like we have 6,000 names of things and then five sizes each. So that makes it 20, 30,000 stencils. Like it's, it's a lot. So um, go check it out. <laughs> You definitely want to. Okay, so to tape our stencil down, we're gonna go through the lettering and on the edge. By giving us, let me show you this, by doing it in one place, I have lots of movement. By doing it in two places, no longer do I have any movement. So that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Okay, so I'm going to get out a dome brush the dome brushes are magic. If you've ever had any problems bleeding under your stencils, then this is what is going to save your bacon. Okay, so um, with the dome brushes, you use them dry, you use a dry paper towel to do a wipe off, and you use dry paint, meaning that you haven't added any water to it. And if you have a really, really cheap brand of paint, um, you're gonna know it's cheap because if it's 50 cents or you've had it for 30 years, you know, that kind of thing, and it was cheap then, you know it's still gonna be a cheap paint. So, and it's not knocking the cheap brands paint, I don't care. But if you're gonna be stenciling, it's, those paints are gonna have a lot of water. And so if they have a lot of water, they seem really runny on your palette or on your um, paper plate or whatever you're using, then you know you've got a thin 
paint and you're gonna need to find something a little thicker. So you want it to feel a little bit like, um, like whipped up heavy whipping cream. That's what your paint should feel like. It should not seem like milk or cream. It should feel like whipped up cream. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna take this blue and it's just kind of a tealy denim-y blue. It's not quite denim, not quite teal. And then our background color is this cream color. So what I do a lot of times when I want my colors to get along with each other is I will go ahead and I will mix the background color in with all the colors that I'm going to use and that makes a little family. So when you make a little family, then it hearts all the other things together and that makes it really get along with each other. So, two burps. So put those side by side and get out a palette knife. I like the offset palette knife. Um, that way, I don't know if you've done this. Um, let me pretend like I'm gonna mix. Say I have a whole bunch of paint on my palette. I've got paint here, paint here, and I want just a little bit of this mixed together. So if I do it with a flat thing, I'm gonna be running through everything that's on my palette already. If I use an offset, it keeps my hand like inches above where I'm going and then I can just mix no matter what's around me. So it makes it really forgiving. So I really just want just a little bit of that. And then when I'm done with my palette knife like that, I always put it between two paper towels and wipe it off and then back in there. If you leave your palette knife and you set it off to the side, if the paint hardens on it, it's gonna be really hard to clean off because that metal is maybe not the best metal, like it's not an expensive metal where you can like sand it and do all kinds of things. And then sometimes they rust. So you wanna definitely just wipe it off, put it back, wipe it off, put it back, and then you'll never have a problem. I've done all three things where I've left it soak in water. I have left it sit off to the side to harden and I have wiped it off and that's definitely the best way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna take out my dome brush. I already have it and I am going to take my dry brush, my dry paper towel, I'm gonna to pick up paint. And so that's what it looks like. It's just a kind of even little smear of paint on the end. If I was doing it incorrectly, that would be incorrect. So that is way too much. I'm gonna wipe that back out. And then I'm gonna come here and I never really want to wipe my brush out on top of my project. I wanna be over here or off to the side because if you have some paint come through the back side, you can leak all the way through and you can stain that project. And then you get all done and it's looking really good and then you've got your paper towel on top or worse still, you flip your paper towel over and start wiping it on the back side and you smear a whole bunch there and then you have to redo the thing. You are gonna be so sad, so don't be sad. Okay, so we're gonna wipe that off, about 15 little swirls. And we're gonna come here to our bunnies. They're so cute there, just doing the like little dance. I love it, hippity hop. Easter is on its way and so is spring. Okay, so we're gonna go here. And then I like to do a swirl technique. Um, you can stipple, which is the up and down move, but um, we like to use really light pressure. I'm gonna show you here. If I'm doing a stipple, this is what stippling looks like, okay? I'm using a lot of energy and it's making a nice strong um, impact of color. If I'm swirling, I'm barely, you notice my brush is not even bending. So notice I get just a dustier effect, okay? So by getting that dustier effect, then I can control the layers and stenciling is a layers game. You're gonna do just light thin layers and it's not gonna bleed under when you do light layers. So if you can control your pressure, you're gonna control all of the mistake factors. Um, that's like a big deal. Okay, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna just swirl with light pressure, not bending the bristles. And when we get here, it's super easy. I actually ghosted a couple of times when I did this, but the paint covered it up. But when we're getting close to our other lettering, we can put this multi-masker. This is a little masking tool right there and just hold it down. And now it's not going to matter if I get near the other holes in my stencil. 
And so I'm gonna go across the whole thing and I am going to just make them all a light blue. Okay, so I've got one coat on everybody. Let's take a peek. Everybody, that stencil should be a peeker. Okay, so when you're peeking, it's going to show you what you're doing, how heavy you are, how light-handed you are, how dark the things are, how light the things are, all of the above. Okay, so let's take a peek. Okay. All right, so they're super cute and they're super dusty and super faint. So if you are a more mild kind of seasoned person, and you could really push this towards the teal if you wanted to, by the way, but if you like it super soft, then you might stop here. I'm gonna go for one more coat. This is, I did two coats here, and you can see that they're much stronger, and I did a light sand through them. So um, you can choose the level that you want, and by starting out light, then you really preserve your um, choices. If you go stipple, 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 stipple right there, um, then you are gonna be bold and dark right from the beginning versus doing two quick soft coats. You saw how long that took? It took like, I think three minutes um, to do that whole line of bunnies. And that's, that's, you know, what's that? Seven inches by, you know, 18 inches or something like that. It's a big stretch of bunnies. Only took a couple minutes. This whole project really, if you feel comfortable, should really only take about 30 minutes. So. Um, Stenciling is fast and you don't have to trace and you don't have to base and you don't have to do all those things. So I love stenciling for that. All right, pick up some more. And we'll do the second coat, same as the first. All right, I wanna talk about a couple of things. When I got to the very end where this is the last bit of the stencil, I noticed that my stencil started kind of rocking. Okay, so what, I don't know if you noticed, but I went up and held my stencil down up here and then continued to do my, um, my dry rubbing. Okay, so when you do that and you see anything moving, just slip your hand up, anchor it down, or get you a second piece of tape and just anchor that. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you is watch what happened here, what we were just talking about, about putting your um, paper towel on your project. I'm gonna lift this up and show you what is going on underneath on the part that I had already rubbed off a lot of paint on. Okay, so look what happened all over my palette. So that is when you put this down here that you're gonna get that on there. And if you don't catch it right away and it dries and then you have to base it, but you've already sanded, it's like you definitely want to keep your paper towel off of your project. It's really easy, especially the bigger your project, it's really easy to think that it's going to help you. And it does not always help you. Okay, so while we're going to take a peek, make sure that you're thinking about um, subscribing to our YouTube channel and make sure that you are ringing the bell so that you get notified because then you'll know when we have all these really cool projects and we'll teach you all kinds of cool things. Okay, so I'm going to dunk this in water because I feel pretty good about that. If you don't know about whether or not you have enough, you wanna check it first. Um, I have hundreds of these dome brushes. You might not have so many. And by the way, when you're getting your dome brushes, you probably wanna start with a set of the five basic and then maybe add two or three more sets as you get experience because you can't use them wet. You have to use them dry. So that's super important. Um, okay, I'm gonna peek. Ta-da! I think that looks perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna take that away. And now notice I just jockeyed up my project. Notice also when I took my tape off of there, I didn't just like wank it off that way. So if you've got it going across there, you wanna take it piece by piece and pull it away because if you just rip it, then you're going to possibly tear your stencil. Now our stencils are bridged really well. Our stencils are amazing, but if you're being really rough with your stencils and you can bend or you can tear. So just be careful. It is a you know piece of mylar plastic, um, really, really tough, but you still wanna be a little bit cautious. So notice now I've, I'm one piece of the tape. I'm gonna bring that in and I want all those white lines to disappear. And now I'm gonna bring this piece of tape down over here 
When you tape onto your piece of wet project, if you just base coated like five minutes ago and you blow dried, um, and then you tape onto that wet paint, um, you can run the risk of peeling when you take the tape off, especially if you leave the tape um, until like two days from now, um, because then that tape and that paint are all drying and bonding together. So you wanna be cautious about your tape and fresh paint. Um, that is something that is really important. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you something super cool. It's amazing and I never knew I didn't know it until I didn't know that I didn't know it. Okay, so it's drop shadowing with a stencil. If you don't know what drop shadowing is, it is a graphic design technique that they take and they put an underline on like the right side and the bottom or the, excuse me, the right side and the bottom or the left side and the bottom. Um, sometimes they even do it on the top and the sides, but they usually do one side and either the top or the bottom, um, either or, but you don't usually do it all the way around because then it's just outlining. But to drop shadow, it shows that like your light source is here and it's coming onto your lettering and it's casting a shadow and it makes everything look deeper. So um, that's a super cool technique. I used to do drop shadow and I'm really actually very good at it um, with a liner brush, okay, or a round brush. And if you're really comfortable with your round brushes and things like that, you can totally do it just using your brush. And it actually goes a little bit faster to do with your brush. However, brush skills, are really tough skills. Um, they take, you know, can take five years to develop a good round or um, liner brush technique. So if you have to wait that long to do this, you're gonna be sad. So I'm gonna show you how to do a stencil trick that you are gonna love. So what we're gonna do is we are going to base our letters with one soft coat of our pink, just enough to mark the territory. And in this case, I'm not gonna do any of the um, any of the cream in with this because it seemed to be just exactly the right color by itself. Okay. Dry brush, dry paint, dry paper towel. Okay. Dip and 15. Might be 10. I don't count. Okay. So we're going to go here and such a light coat, just enough. I'm gonna peek in the middle. I've got it anchored too well. There's no technique to this because I'm not trying to base it. I'm just trying to get a scumble of color on the edges. A scumble of color is very much like a skosh, right? Just a little touch. It's a unit of measurement. Okay, let's take a little peeky poo. All right, so I've got just a nice amount of pink there to show me where my letters are. I'm gonna pull this away. And it's already dry because stenciling is a layers game. I don't know how many times I can say that and be like heard. Um, you definitely want to play with the layers game. So because it is a layers game, by the time I went from here to here, this is all dry. So I don't have to wait for anything. Um, it's amazing not to have to blow dry in between every coat. Um, it's amazing not to have ridges. It's amazing not to have bleeding under. Everything is good when you treat it like a layers game. Okay, so we're gonna go here. This is your big technique, okay? We're gonna line this up, and this is how you do your drop shadow. Now I'm gonna use the white background as my, my measuring place. So I'm gonna drop it down, and then I'm gonna move it over, okay? So I'm using the tape. I'm gonna drop it down, and I'm gonna keep my sides straight because those are nice little measuring points. And I'd say that's like an eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna slide it over that way. Is that what I did there? Nope, I'm gonna slide it the other way. I don't want anybody's eyeballs to get confused. So we'll try to keep it consistent. So I'm checking across to see if I've got everything straight. 
I'm gonna look at this line over here and I do see that it's more narrow there and less there. So I'm gonna yank that piece of tape over. This is the hardest part of this is just making sure you've got it even. If you don't have it even, you could go downhill. Okay, so if you're going downhill, then that's gonna be unfortunate and you don't want unfortunate. So get that two pieces of tape and double check that I like what I got going on here. Okay, I think I've got it even. I think this might be a little heavier than I did up here, but I don't think that I, I don't think that I think it's wrong. Okay, so this is a very dark gray. I definitely am going to be brush mixing and yep, so I didn't burp that and darn if I didn't get some right on my thumb. That little burping step is really a cool trick. Okay, get our dome brush. Okay, so the dry brush. And I think I'm going to bend this one around. I like to use all the sides of the paper towel that I can. And these are bounty paper towel. And um, what's interesting with these paper towels is I, they used to be bountiful, no offense bounty, but um, they used to be bountiful on both sides. And now they're really only on this imprint side, this press side. Um, this doesn't raise too much lint and stuff, but the back side definitely raises some lint. You could use a Viva, you could use a Scott, you could use a different bunch of um, towels. Um, I do okay with these as long as I just use that front imprint side. Otherwise I catch too much lint. If you're catching a lot of lint, it's your paper towels. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this is I don't want it too dark, but I don't want it too weak. So I feel like it's a little bit dark. I'm gonna pick that up in my brush and then I'm gonna pick up just a little and then just mush it over on the paper towel. And then I have a toned gray. Okay, so that's what I want. Notice it's not as dark as that gray, but it's not as light as that. So that's perfect. Okay, and then we're gonna go over here. And same thing with the bunnies, same thing with all the other, just go across the whole thing, just keep remixing, keep wiping off and keep doing the thing. Okay, so I've got it all covered and now I'm gonna go back to it and I'm gonna make sure that I like the edges of everything. Be careful about ghosting. I got a little teeny bit of a ghost line right here. I'll show you how to take care of that in just a second. If you take care of it right away, it's not a pain. If you wait, hmm, womp, womp, womp. Okay, I'm gonna call that good and we're gonna take it away. So now we have this really weird looking thing where we have pink behind and gray in front and all of that, and it's perfect, okay? Now we'll line it back up. Oh, let me show you the ghosting trick because you wanna do this within the first five minutes. So if it takes you five minutes to do the next step, then your paint could be cured. And if your paint is cured, then you can't fix it the easy way. So this is the easy way. This is a click eraser. Love, this is very cathartic. It's like those little popping toys the kids are using in, tool, in school. And so right down over here in two spots, I ghosted. So what I'm gonna do is use this PVC eraser. I'm gonna put it in my very dirty water. And I'm just going to erase with wet water. And that takes the ghosting line right away. If you have any bleeding under or any of those kinds of things happening, you can do the same thing. So you just wet the eraser and erase next to where you have it, um, where you have your mistake, and then it will take that mistake right away within about five minutes of drying. So that gives you a big open window of fix it time. You can also use a paper towel that you dip into water and then kind of scrub at it. The eraser, for whatever reason, seems to take the paint right up and doesn't do any damage. So I love that. Okay, so pop that back in there. Brush off all any hairs. Um, the dome brushes are made out of a boar's head or a boar's brush. Um, some are synthetic and some are natural, and I think these are the natural. But um, what you want to know is that with a, a ferrule that big, 
that's a lot of gluing hairs up into the ferrule. And so sometimes some of those release and they're just not all glued in perfectly. If you lose them, let your paint dry first and then brush them off. Otherwise, um, you can smear your paint. Okay, so we're gonna go on top of here. We're gonna realign back to our pink. We're looking for white lines around our project. Secure it. Another dome brush. So you can see what happens every time I change colors, I would have to wash my brush. Okay, so and you can get these brushes on studior12.com. They are our number one product. They are absolutely hands down what will prevent bleeding under just because the way they're built. And I did not talk about that. Other stencil brushes are, they're flat. Okay, so when they hit the surface, they bend and they slide under your stencil. Because these are dome, they hit, let's see if I can do it this way. They hit the surface, but I'm like pushing to the point where I could like make holes in my hand. Um, I'm not getting anything pushing because it's shaped like a dome. So because of that, when you push pressure on that, it's not scooting under and that's why they're so perfect and they work so amazing and they are, they're a magic brush. Okay, so we're gonna go back into our pink. I'm gonna switch paper towels because I've filled that one up. New paper towel. I'm gonna go into dry brush, dry paint, dry it off on my paper towel, light pressure, um, you can use a little stipply action with this if you want to cover up your gray. The gray with this pink is going to be harder to cover up, um, but a couple of light coats ought to do it. You really want to focus where you see the gray. So if I want to cover in one coat, I can go here and just stipply stipple. You wanna be careful about how much pressure you're putting on your brush. You don't wanna be bleeding under at this point. You've gone, you've come so far. But it does definitely cover, I'm gonna do a swirl stipple. So I'm gonna swirl. And then I'll go back one. And then I'll stipple stipple. Yeah, and that's really covering it up nicely. I hope that you guys ask us lots of questions in the comment section below. Um, that's what we absolutely live for. We want to answer your questions. We want to be here for you. We want to let you know that um, you know, you're not alone doing your DIY and your crafting and your sign painting and all of that. Um, and we want you to make the most beautiful gifts that you can share with your family and friends. I think it's just, it's an amazing craft. I love it. Okay, we've got it all swirled. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna do a little bit of stippling and then we'll be done with our letters. It was super fast. Okay, so we've done our swirled and our stipple. So it's really tough when you're going back over a light color or dark color like the gray with your light pink. And pink is one of the ones that doesn't base coat very well. So I'll just double check. And anywhere where it looks like I just need a little bit of extra swirly action, I'll just give it a little swirly action. And you can see what's really interesting I'm still wet paint from here to here because I didn't do a layers game, I did a stipple game. And that's really important to know because that is gonna slow down your drying time. So I'm gonna grab my blow dryer and give it a, a little hot heat hit. Okay, now I should be able to just give it a little swishy swirl. Or in painter's terms, a little swirly poo, right? Okay, are we ready to do the reveal? Here we go with our lettering. 
Dun, dun, dun. Look at that beautiful drop shadow. That's so amazing. I love drop shadowing through a stencil because it's perfect every time. And boy, I can tell you, it doesn't always work that way when you are doing um, it freehand. And if you do it freehand, you spit on it, you wipe it off and you do it again, but still it's nice not to have to do all that work. Okay, the last piece, well actually there's two more pieces that we're gonna do. Um, well, maybe three more pieces. Okay, we got some more work to do. So we are going to do the tea towel stripes. This is what it was at market, we, um, 2022. So if you're coming to this video later, uh, we went to market and tea towel stripes or grain sack stripes um, arrived at market with a flourish and a great big giant, how do you do ma'am, let's get going. Um, they were on everything and they're classic. They have been around since like 18 something. Um, they are old world French. They, they go through all of the countries in the world and they're just amazing. And I love that they're here because they make such a statement, but it's understated. It's really simplified. It's a really neat effect. You can use it through the middle of things. You can use it under things. You can use it on the end of things. Um, let me show you real quick. Um, we did this is one of our videos. You can check out the link above. Um, this is painting on Ikea um, pillow covers. And we have done the tea towel stripe on either side of just a basic lemon stencil. And then on the other side, I show you it in a triple or a quad stripe. So you can do it in a lot of different ways and it's really amazing. And then we also did a table runner on some rock lime, which is blackout weight. Um, and we did that as well. So we've got lots of videos for these um, that you can check out and they're just amazing and incredible. I think, oops, makes such an amazing um, technique. Okay, let's talk about this right here. Okay, so with our stencils, we have a thing that we call um, finger traps. Okay, so if I can put my finger through a stencil, Okay, and I can trap my finger, then you might need another bridge. Okay, so that we really watch finger traps very, very, very strongly. Um, and with a big giant stripe stencil, you end up with something that is like an arm trap. Okay, so um, that doesn't seem optimal, but I'm gonna show you how we've worked around that. All right, so what we're gonna do with this to make it easier for it to stay stuck down is we're gonna use a product called Stick and Restick. It's an alien product and I have to say, magic stuff. We did a foiling video and if you don't know what foiling is, it is a foil product that you can put, you can put the sticky stuff um, it's got to be repositionable. You can put it through your stencil and then you lift off your stencil and you put the foil on top and it makes it the most glorious sheen, shiny <sighs> awesomeness that you could ever see. However, what makes this neat is when you put it on your stencil, it also re-sticks so that you can stick it down, take it off, re-stick it. So, um, and it doesn't leave a residue. And then we also like this little wheelie dealy dude and um, let me show you both of these on this stencil. And let me take a piece of wax paper. If I was to have this stencil in my craft supplies, I would totally um, take and do the re-stick or this stick the whole, um, the whole surface, okay? Like I would do the whole stencil. So we go here, do that. It's just the right size. And we were talking um, about throwing things on the floor. We were talking about using the same dauber for the stick and restick. If you don't get it cleaned out right away, it can make it a little bit more dense on your daubers. Um, however, if you clean it right away, I haven't seen a problem. So you definitely um, don't need to do that. So I'm gonna just shake that up just a little bit. This one doesn't need to be burped. Apply this on your palette in the same shape as your dauber. And just daub it off. And then we're gonna hold this down and it's gonna kind of wanna pop it up. So I'll hold it here. Okay. 
It really doesn't matter if you get some on the front, if this bounces around, because you're gonna paint on top of it and that's not going to matter. The paint will kind of seal it under. You could tape this down I'm not wanting to bother. And it's really, really re-stickly. Um, it will re-stick your fingers. Um, so I'm gonna just use this little palette knife so I'm not getting my fingers re-stuck. Re-stickly is a brand new word I just made up. They make spray versions of these. They're kind of harder to play with. Um, so just FYI, um, I think that the paste is good or the glue is good. It's like a glue and it's dry when it's clear. And if you do it too thick, it will stay white and it will stay kind of sticky. So that's the technique. These two things are gonna go in with my brushes. I'm gonna sink them down in with the brush. And then let me show you the little yellow sticky um, tape we have. So what you can do with this is you can just roll it. This is actually a little bit simpler, but it's not as simple on shaped things. So you can take this and you can just roll it down your project. When you get into these skinny areas, it's a little bit trickier. However, it's definitely doable, not hard at all. And I don't think these are refillable. Um, I haven't gotten that far with this yet. Okay, so then you peel everything off, throw this away, and then you set this aside and allow it to dry. All right, so I have the adhesive on my stencil and if I pick it up, it will stick to my hand, but it comes off and there's no sticky on my hand. So that is magic. Um, I do want to share with you a little bit of a storage technique, um, and it has to do with the adhesive. This is going to be an affiliate link. This is the disc journal um, rings, and then this is the disc journal punch that goes with it. It has like a little pin punch, and what you do is you just punch your stencil along the edge, and that makes it so it fits on these little um, little rings. And it's super sturdy. Let me show you. You just punch it right back on there. Um, I love storage techniques. Stencil storage is one of the number one, after bleeding under your stencils, it's one of the number one problems that people with stencils have. Um, my second favorite way to store stencils is on these um, curtain rod, um, wire curtain rod things um, that we have an affiliate link for as well. Um, and they have little metal clips that's a really good thing if you have a closet in your craft room and stuff like that. Um, you could put two shelves up like we've done here or a shelf and mount it underneath. Um, and then you can put dividers in it and things like that. What I've done is I've color coded and made books. This is my pattern stencils. Um, this is word stencils. So that's got a different color on it. I've got a whole bunch of different books of things, but watch, this is like 20 stencils. And this one plastic stencil with these little holes is holding this whole thing up so they're super durable. And what I really wanted to show you was when you flip this over to this plaid stencil, when you use, this stencil is the most misunderstood stencil that I think has ever been made. When you do it one way, you get like, like a nice plaid technique, but then when you turn it the opposite way, it makes this beautiful woven plaid. It's beautiful, but it has adhesive on the back side of it and it does not, you see, it's not even lifting this page up at all. Um, let's see if I can make it lift it. I cannot make it lift it. Oh, I, oh, there we go, right there. But you can see it's super easy to manipulate and it does not cause a problem. So even when you're putting them, your stencils all together like this, the adhesive does not make a difference. So here's what we're gonna do next. Got that adhesive side. I'm gonna go to our edge. And then I went all the way up to just square it up 
squared it up with the edge of my board. Squaring up with the edge of your board only works if you are completely sure that you're square with your board. So not to malign any woodworkers out there, um, but sometimes those you know chop saws don't necessarily make everything perfectly square. We are laser cut. Um, our files are made in a very high-end program. Our files are straight, okay? They're square, they're straight, um, but you don't always get that. So if you don't have that, you do wanna make sure. Um, let's talk about that for just a second. Um, so if I knew that my bunny crossing was straight, I could measure underneath my bunny crossing and I could make a line and then I could measure down from there or up from there. Um, you wanna choose something that you know is straight. Okay, so whatever that is, if you know that this edge is straight because it was come, came from the factory but you don't know about this edge, use this edge. Because when you get into straight lines and you start tracking downward, it's gonna be a problem. So use your T-square. Um, these are, I think these are right now, they're an affiliate link. Um, they went through a big supply chain problem. And I wanna show you one little hack. Um, I really love showing you guys hacks um, as I'm going through. Um, we may or may not have painted along this whole border of this. And I earlier was trying to make marks um, doing a different project and I couldn't see my lines and I was like, well, that's broken. So what you do is you take a paper towel and you take some rubbing alcohol. I don't know if it has to be 91%. Um, I think both work, but um, rubbing alcohol is a paint um, dissolver. So what you can do on this is you can just go through and you can see it's dissolving and you can rub on the paint that you got on there and then you can erase it. So nice way to recover the tool that you have and um, not have a ruined piece of equipment. Okay, but in this case, we know that we're laser straight. So we're just gonna bring this back down here, come down here and you don't want to start it in from the edge, although I have seen them where they pull them in from the edge and take them like where you just bring these stripes right out from the edge of the bunny and the crossing and it just floats in the middle and it looks really good. There are so many great examples of this um, tea towel striping. I am in love with it. You can tell. All right, so we get that lined up there and there. Use our tape. There, and we need a second spot. I'm gonna go up here. When I'm going through a skinny line like that, I'll press in, and when I'm on the edge, I'll just press lightly. Um, it just definitely needs just a little bit less pressure. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use two colors for our stripe. I used a very, I used a dark golden color and these are our honey bottles and this is just acrylic paint um, that we buy in giant giant things and then put them in smaller containers um, the honey bottles are really hard to find um, we get them from amazon that's an affiliate link and um, i can't even find them in my orders when i do the ordering because they're not actually called honey bottles but that's like what the shape is that's that classic honey bottle shape and um, they're not the company so the company doesn't call it a jar doesn't call it a bottle doesn't call it um, honey doesn't call it anything that you can search for i think it's like a jug or something it's a it's a really weird name so um it's really hard to find so you want to go catch our links um, we have a whole blog post on our website studior12.com where you can go see all of our affiliate links and that's gonna have some really good tools that you guys can um, can catch. Okay, so we're gonna mix the first color, and the first color is gonna be a mix of this um, creamier honey color with the darker honey color. Oh, I'm making a heart, look at that. How cute is that? Let me just draw that down, yay. We bought a new piece of equipment that came in last week 
and um, it has its on button has a winky eye and he's got a big red smile with a blue winky eye and it's adorable so we think that he's going to be a good little energy piece of equipment okay so i'm out of paper towels i usually do double folded over with the bounty word out and that seems to be thick enough to make it not make a mess i'm going to go into that blend <clears throat> I'm going to do it twice because I want a little bit better coverage. Now, here's the most important thing about doing a continuing stripe. If I go all the way to the end and I tend to be the person that will break this rule every time that I do it, I'll cover the whole thing. I'll come right to the edge of that. If I do that all the way to the line, then I can't feather that line in and I end up going like, hey, nice line nice line Ugh, it's super aggravating so don't go to the end leave it feathered and then move your stencil and you won't have that line to worry about okay so we're going to do this on the dark and we're going to want to hold this down because these are a little well no we're not because this is stuck down oh i'm being so goofy okay so guess what this is that adhesive and totally forgot that I put the adhesive on there because it's like normally I don't use adhesive on my stencils. It's magic. Okay. So I don't know if that makes me a crafter just like you or if that makes me less than you, but I hope that you realize that sometimes it's just easy to get distracted by what you're doing. And know that we all just figure it out. Okay, so I don't want to go right there to the edge. So I just feather that right to there. Let me grab another brush. I'm going to get another brush out of down here. This brush is going to be one that I pick up my cream and my lighter golden color. And then I'm going to do those on the littler stripes. How nice not to have to worry about that moving around. You do have to press it down. And then don't take it all the way to the edge. Turn this side if I want just a little bit more. Okay, and now, awesome. We line that up with our edge, with our stripes. I am gonna go ahead and tape it. Just have it right there. And then we'll go and we don't take it all the way to the edge. Just feather, feather, feather. Not all the way to the edge. I have to remind myself. And you also don't want to go back over this edge. Okay, so I think that I have enough there. Peel. So we're going to take this and we're going to line it up. And I have to say, super easy to get distracted and to not see what you're doing with all these lines. So make sure this line, this line, and this line are all within your lines. It's super important. And then make sure you go all the way to your edge and that is gonna make everything nice and clean. I've got one little stray straggler. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. Do our darker color. And go into our lighter. All 
right. I think that we've got it going on. Okay, so now this is gonna stay sticky. Both the um, tape sticky and the other sticky are gonna be sticky. Um, you can take it off with rubbing alcohol if you want to, so you can lay it on like this craft mat um, on some, in your sink and do like just a removal with your paper towel with some um, rubbing alcohol. That is how you can get that off. Um, I prefer to just leave that stuff sticky. I think that it's a really great thing. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe off any stray hairs. Now, one thing that you're gonna find is with your um, pink lettering, because you did so many coats of it, we did the original coat, we did the drop shadow coat, then we did two coats of the other, plus a little swirl and a scumble. Um, it's a little bit kind of gnarly, crunchy. I do not like stencil projects that have that really raised um, effect. So I'm gonna show you how to take care of that because I think it makes it a much more quality product. We have our 60 grit. We have our 120 grit. I'm gonna take my 120 grit and you can watch what I'm doing right here. I'm not pushing at all. And then this is suddenly, let's see if we can hear it. Very soft. Okay, and I'm not pushing harder. This is so soft. This is really kind of crunchy sounding. So that is the difference. This is just gonna take the edges of the paint away, but it's not going to distress or sand through. And I think that's about right. I could do one across my yellow stripe that, oh, that really brings it down. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to wax this so that you get a really nice finish. Let's distress Mr. Bunnies, okay? They've got some, they got a little bit of a, raised effect as well. I think that um, people tend to feel their projects when you give them a gift or when, you know, they don't come up to your wall and like feel it, but when you give them something, they're gonna feel the project first. So it's really nice to give it that just really warm, um, mellow, beautiful feeling, um, almost like a antique blanket kind of feeling, you know, it just, just feels good. All right, so with our bunnies, I wanna make them feel a little bit more distressed, a little bit more maybe woven. So I'm gonna go right through them with a 60 grit. They're also the darkest thing that we have on the board. And so I want that to settle down. Okay, get one to the yellow. The yellow was feeling a little bit bright. All right, and then one thing that I did that is a super sneaker thing um, that you're gonna be happy that you stuck around for is big mystery thing. Okay, here's an art lesson, but an easy one, okay? I'm gonna take my paper towel, bounty side out, um, if you're using bounty. Um, now what we have here is we have three separate, color, well, four separate colors. We have our white ground, we have a blue bunny, we have pink lettering, and we have yellow stripes. Okay, so what they call that when you have something like that that's just three separate colors that are kind of random together, um, they call it an isolated color. Okay, so the blue is isolated because it's the only place that it is. Um, I don't have a bunch of flowers around bringing the blue around. I don't have a green that would lead to the blue, blah, blah, blah. Um, and my yellow is sitting down here and my pink's sitting over here and I've got all these things going on. I don't have a way to bring it all around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip the toe of my paper towel. I don't know why that's a toe, maybe it's a finger. Okay, into the water. And I'm going to pick up my blue, almost like shoe shine style. I don't know how many of you have ever done shoe shine, but I'm an army brat and an Air Force um, veteran. So um, you put your finger on the end and then you kind of smear it on the shoe and then you buff it with the dry. Okay, so now you had a shoe shining lesson. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the blue down and around. So I'm gonna sneak that blue in ever so lightly. Okay, and bring it across the bottom. Bring it maybe a little bit in between by the pink. And now we bring that blue. We could maybe even connect it just a little bit more. So it's such a hint. It's such the softest little tinty tint. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. Toe of the paper towel. 
or the finger. And we're going to go into our yellow. Yes. Shoe shine technique. And then we're going to go up at the top. And we're really going to buff that out with the back of the paper towel. All right, let's finish this. This is the most amazing part. So I'm glad that you stuck around because you're going to learn how to finish all your projects this way. So if you're going to put this sign outside and hang it in the sun and do all that kind of stuff in the weather, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to use a DuraClear. This is a DecoArt Americana available at all your big box stores. Um, we carry it on our website too. Um, it's a matte varnish and it's polyurethane. So it is going to protect your stuff. Um, I have used this on stepping stones. Um, you always want to use matte when you're going to be outside in the sunshine because when the sun hits a shiny surface, then it blows it out and it looks like a mirror and then you can't see the forest for the trees. You can't see the sign at all. So you want to definitely make sure that you use a matte because the matte doesn't do that. But I've used this on stepping stones, set them outside for a year and a half and all the weather in the world came over it. We're in Ohio. I don't know if you know what that means, but it means the weather changes every five minutes and they were perfect. And I actually took them and put them on um, in a trade show um, in many trade shows and sold patterns from the designs that I put on them. So very important right there. However, if you're going to be inside or give this as a gift, um, I love a wax. Let me show you how to do the wax. This is Clapham's beeswax. Okay, so this is a wonderful wax product. There's a second wax product. Let me show you that one. Um, there is a natural wax that's a min wax. Both of these are really good. Um, I have a preference for this one. We use this one a lot in our boutique um, here in Gallup Police, but um, it's amazing. It's amazing, different reasons. <clears throat> This one I use for chip paint a lot. I never use this one for chip paint. So let me show you this one. I'm gonna grab a pretend glove. This is a fold top baggie. Um, when nitro gloves became unaccessible because of global things, um, I have switched to using just a plastic bag. I'm gonna use a sea sponge that we keep inside there. Swirl it around, soften everything up. This is a stinky product. This is a petroleum based product. This is a natural beeswax product. One of the reasons I probably love this much better. And then I'm going to just wax right over the top of this. Reapply. And then you will buff this out with a, like an old t-shirt. Go grab your kids' old t-shirts, your old t-shirts, your husband's old t-shirts. Old socks would be great. Just keep a little basket of them. Rub that in and pop the lid back on. Throw your glove away. And I'm gonna use this paper towel, it's not the best. Buff that out and you can see just a little bit of film on there and then, oh my goodness, feels so good. Give it 30 minutes, 24 hours to dry and cure and you are going to feel, <laughs> you are going to feel like you have made the best project. So if you want to see more spring projects like this, you want to check out the playlist above. We're going to show you how to do all the beautiful spring things. Um, we're super excited to share with you. Leave your comments below. We'll see you next time.